So, I mean, you grew up in a sport that is really reserved for very rich people, yeah. right? But you did not grow up rich at all, yeah. and your dad made your career possible. Like, how did that all begin? How hard was that journey getting into F1? Uh, it was it was incredible. I mean, I, I grew up on my dad's uh, couch and in a normal council estate, uh, and it was a weekend hobby for me and my dad. We kind of stumbled across it. We started racing RC cars when I was four. Right. And he thought I had really good hand-to-eye coordination, so he bought me a go-kart. It was really old from a newspaper. And we arrived at the, at the track for the first time. We were not welcome. We were the only first, the only black people there. Right. And, um, you know, and it was very, very expensive. So my dad had four jobs just to keep us going. He was uh, going to London, doing his normal uh, job, which was IT at a railroad, railroad station. And then he would come home, he'd be putting up for sales signs, vending machines, anything he could find a little bit of cash to, because it's so expensive. I think for me, I mean, school was the most probably the most traumatizing and diff most difficult part of my life. Wow. Um, I already was being bullied at the age of six. Um, I think at the time, that particular school, I was probably one of three kids of color. And just bigger, stronger bullying kids were throwing me around a lot of the time. I was always the last picked in the, you know, when you're standing in the playground and you're uh, in the line of when they're picking teams for football, I was always the last one chosen or not even chosen, even if I was better than somebody else. Um, and then the the constant jabs, the things that are either thrown at you, like bananas or people that would use the M word, just so relaxed. Um, people calling you half cast and, you know, just really not knowing where you fit in. I think that for me was that was tough. Also, because I was racing every weekend, I would leave on the Thursday night. We would travel, you know, pack up the motorhome. We would travel around the country to race on the weekends. And no one else knew when I'd get back to school, every, all the kids have done normal things on the weekend. And I'll come back and say, I'm, I was racing. And people would be like, oh, I've done that before. <laughs> you know, like at the, at, the, at the theme park or something. <laughs> but no one really knew what my goal was and could really, they thought we would, yeah, maybe it was a joke. Uh, but I was lucky I got signed when I was 13, so that's really... But the goal and my dream started when I was five, was to be like Ayrton Senna, which you know right, right, very right. much about. And, um, and kind of, we never lost sight of that. But my dad, what my dad didn't want, to, want us to do is to struggle as he did. He's from Grenada, came to London, and, you know, struggled really, um, finding money, finding a good job. And he, also my brother's disabled, so he's like, I don't want my, my kids to struggle like I have. So he worked to the bone to create an opportunity for us. Right, the two of you were a team. I mean, you've got your dad teaching you how to race cars. You get signed at 13, and that's really the beginning of the journey. Because many people have said in the world that F1 is the pinnacle of driving. I mean, these are the fastest cars in the world. You, you, you have this machine that you are controlling, and you are driving against the fastest drivers in the world. You went from nothing to being a four-time world champion. Do you sometimes take a moment to pause and go like, this is, this is surreal? Oh, every day, I'm, you know, I get to travel the world, I get to see and meet so many different pe people, and um, racing the Formula 1 car is just the greatest thing, man. Uh, I remember from the first day that I got to drive a Formula 1 car in 2006, um, and when I entered Formula 1 when I was 22, I'm 33 now, and my goal was always to emulate this, this older, you know, legendary driver who was a Brazilian who died in the sport, because it is a dangerous sport. And he was three-time world champion, as you know. Right. And so two years ago, I, I equaled him, um, which was kind of just an incredible moment for, for me. And then since then, I've kind of been trying to carry on the baton from him because, as I said, he was the guy I always wanted to be. We dreamed of this as, as, as a, you know, when we were young. And when I was young, when we were watching the Grand Prix, and this is way, way beyond our dreams. And I think it's so important for kids out there to hopefully see this and know that no one to tell, uh, don't listen to anybody that tells you you can't achieve something dream the impossible and speak it into existence and you've got to work for it you've got to chase it and you've got to never give up and never doubt yourself and just continue to keep your head up continuing to to march on ahead uh, towards your dream and never losing sight now i think that's definitely for sure the most difficult thing is keeping keeping your goal and your eyes set on that and not being distracted um, not giving up. I think the easiest thing in life is to give up on whatever, you know, whatever you're focused on or whatever you're hopeful for. The hardest thing is to continue to keep going.
but we have to. Like we have to continue to hold on. And I would imagine for so many people out there, that is, that is, that is probably the most difficult thing. There's a lot less learned in success. It's like the tip of the iceberg. It's the losses and it's the failures and it's the continuously, just the perseverance that you're needed, that you need to do. Like, I love that image of the iceberg where you see the sea level and the iceberg on the top that everyone sees, but below is what people don't get to see. And it's, and it's relevant for every single person out there. Mm -hmm. It's finding your core. It's letting yourself know it's okay to feel the pain. It's okay to, to uh, accept that your failures and, you know, put it on you. It's like it's just another, another notch on your belt that is going to make you stronger and just knowing that that is the case mm. i've failed so many more times than i've succeeded so many more and that people don't even know maybe necessarily about or see and still today i'm making those failures mm -hmm. those mistakes and or, or making mistakes but i know that that's that's a part of the journey that's that's what i'm then harnessing and that's what's making me stronger <laughs>